Hello, my name is Shamash Aladina. You're listening to the Teach Mindfulness podcast. And today I'm talking about the four elements of mindfulness. Now, the reason why mindfulness is particularly popular right now is because of all the research behind it. Uh, and most people are more aware of the research on a on a standardized eight week course called MBSR, another one called MBCT. But actually, there's a whole other realm of very good in depth research from a field called ACT, Acceptance and Commitment Therapy or Acceptance and Commitment Training. And through their research, they've actually unpicked the different elements of mindfulness, and they've discovered that there's these four key elements. And they've been quite well tested. They've you know, tried one and then the other and put some in and took some out. And through this um, steady level of research done quite carefully, they found that these four key elements that underpin mindful awareness, I guess, and um, underpin our ability to live with better mental health. And so I'm going to go through these four. The first one is acceptance. Now you can work, use the word acceptance, allowing, letting be, opening. Uh, there's so many different words that you can use for this because of there's quite a lot of misconceptions about the word acceptance. But it's essentially about making space for our experiences, our internal experiences. So uh, in particular, like kind of our feelings and our sensations and our urges. Usually when we have unpleasant experiences within ourselves, we want to get rid of them, we want to push them away, we want to pretend they're not there, we want to try and put a positive spin and pretend that we're not having this experience. Or we try to fight them, to, to force them away. So it turns out the first kind of element of mindfulness that helps in its efficacy, that makes it effective, is the skill of acceptance. And that's an important word, skill. These are all different skills that we can learn to develop and grow. So that's the first one. Next one is called cognitive diffusion, or a sim simpler way of saying it is unhooking. And it's the skill of being able to unhook from our thoughts. Normally we have thoughts that are popping into our head all the time, obviously, and we're so hooked onto them, we just take them to be true, take them to be facts. But actually on another level, they are just sounds or images that are arising in our consciousness. So uh, the other skill that we learn through mindfulness and mindfulness meditation is this unhooking skill, cognitive diffusion. And it turns out that meditation isn't the only way to develop the skill. There's actually hundreds of ways you can develop this. And that's why I'm quite a big fan of ACT as well. And I'm trying to bring some of that into my trainings. These many, many different ways of unhooking for example, just saying, if you have a thought like, I can't do it, you could say, you could say to yourself, I noticing, I'm noticing I'm having the thought, I can't do it. I'm noticing I'm having the thought, I can't do it. And straight away, you're creating some cognitive diffusion, you're creating some unhooking there. It didn't even require any meditation in a sense. So that's the second skill. Third one can be called perspective taking. It can be called self as context. It could be called uh, observing self. It could be called the transcendent self. But it's that skill of being able to be an observer of your own experience and also to see things from different perspectives, including seeing yourself from a different perspective. Uh, very often we see things from just one angle, but how do we see things from uh, outside of ourselves? How do we see things from another person's eyes? How do we step into another person's shoes? This is actually a skill that we can develop. And, you know, meditation may not directly develop that skill, or sometimes it does, especially the observing self, when you're kind of watching and observing and noticing your breathing or your thoughts or feelings coming up. This skill of transcendent self starts to develop. And, you know, you may link this to the idea of spirituality, but you don't have to at all. It's a psychological skill, actually, but it's linked to a lot of spiritual experiences that people can also have in, in mindfulness. And the last one, which is the most uh, common uh, description of mindfulness, the last element is actually having a flexible and fluid present moment attention. So if you can move your attention from place to place, if you can, um, and sometimes it needs to be more focused, sometimes it needs to be more open, being able to move it from one place to the other. This is another important and very important element of mindfulness. So these are the four. And uh, I would say if you want to become an, a, a more skillful mindfulness teacher, it's good to know the, that these are the elements that make mindfulness up. Acceptance, cognitive diffusion, 
transcendent self and presence, this flexible skill of being present and being able to uh, flexibly and fluidly move that attention around. So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Um, and if there's time in the future, I'll share some other ways in which to develop these skills. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Shamash. You've been listening to the Teach Mindfulness podcast. If you want to find out more, check out our website, uh, shamashaluna.com or the Teach Mindfulness Online.com. All right. All the best and see you for the next one.